I just never thought that I would be somebody to be addicted to a drug. It's just something that you don't know you have until you use that drug or, you know, you drink that drink and then you can't stop. And it yeah. literally, you know, took over my life. Addiction has affected me and my family my whole entire life. And I think it's great that it's September because it's actually National Recovery Month. And I'm really proud and happy my sister gets to tell her story today. And I'm just thankful that you and Tyler were, you know, able to do what you've done for Erin and I know that she's happy and I'm happy that she's happy and I'm just so thankful that my family took you know over and came and stepped in when I couldn't because there's so many people out there that their children are in foster care and they're fighting I see them in class fighting to get them out even if I do have to go to prison down the road you know God forbid I, I don't have to, I hope I don't, but if I do, I, knowing that I have my family and you guys behind me, it, it, it's a different mindset, it really is. It is, and I remember texting you. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be quite different, but in today's video, I'm going to answer my most asked question, and this is my most requested video by far. And that is, why did me and Tyler adopt my niece, Erin? This whole situation is literally my life. Um, and it's something that can't really be answered in a one-word sentence. So I'm going to take you on a little journey with me today. And I'm going to let my sister tell her story and Erin tell her story and me tell my story. So you hear it from all of us and even Tyler. This is more than just like an IG story or more than just a simple answer. There's a lot to it. And, and the reason I haven't filmed this video yet and I'm just now getting to it is because like this whole thing is... My private life it's literally my life that I live every day it's, it's Aaron's life it's yeah it's Aaron's life it's Tyler's life it's my yeah. sister's life and it's affected us all so much we wanted Aaron to be comfortable in our home before we even thought about filming something like yeah. this too. I never really had an intention on ever having this conversation with you guys and it's not because I don't care about you guys but it's because it's such a sensitive subject and such a big thing that happened in my family and but I know that when I implemented her in, it was just like her just here and it was so much left unsaid. So with talking to my sister and with talking to Aaron, they both agree they're really excited for me to film it and talk about it now. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about addiction, teen moms, um, what it's like to have Aaron, what my life was like without her and before I had her and why we adopted her. And by the way, I'm on my way to get her from school right now. There she is. Oh, hey, E. Hey. Come on in. Oh, you guys. <laughs> That's the camera stand. <laughs> the first question is, who is Erin? And Erin is my niece. Hi. <laughs> she is my sister's daughter. That's me. <laughs> so we're going to go home and answer a few more of these questions, Katie. Okay. You want to talk about yourself, Erin? You want to tell them a fun fact about you? Yeah, give us 10 fun facts. <laughs> okay. I'm 15. Love it. My birthday's December 10th. Sagittarius. Ooh. Yep. What's your social? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she she doesn't know it. I know. We don't answer that. Oh, are you talking about social? Uh, She's about to tell them her social media, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought you meant. I was Aaron like, social security. And <laughs> Weaver. What if I did that? All right. See you at the house. Bye. See you at the house. All right, we're back home and I'm gonna continue answering some of your questions. My next question is, what was it like growing up in Alabama? Um, I think in this question I'll answer a little bit of my childhood and like my life in Alabama um, because I lived there for 25 years. I lived in Montgomery, Alabama for 25 years and then I lived in California for a little bit over five years. So I spent a lot of time there and growing up, I lived with my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sister. I would ugh, describe my childhood as really chaotic. Um, I don't wanna really sugarcoat it. It was really crazy. My dad had a heavy drinking problem. He was an alcoholic, and he was an alcoholic my whole entire life. So I didn't really know. I don't know, it was like very normal for me, but you know, my dad, 
it caused a lot of chaos, it caused a lot of fights, it caused even violence in our household, my parents singing along. And on top of that, we were a low income family. My water and power were cut off literally all the time. Um, cable cut off all the time, phones cut off all the time. Um, and it was really chaotic. But I don't want you guys thinking I'm telling you this so you're like have empathy for me and feel bad for me. I just wanna be candid and let you guys know the real real and what really went on because I know there are so many people out there in the exact same situation as I was in and I want you to know you're not alone and that you can get through it and you know, your life can change completely. But with that being, with all that being said, I think me, my brother and sister all handled that childhood differently. I think my brother, when he turned 18, he left. He left the situation. He moved out the day he graduated high school and he never moved back in. Granted, he didn't just dip out on our whole family and we never saw him again. He was very there for us and still around, but he just never moved back into that lifestyle. And then my sister, I think she handled it the hardest. I think it affected her a lot. Um, I think being around that much arguing and fighting and violence and addiction, it hurt her and she struggled with things because of it. And with me, I was the youngest, so I feel like I just sat back and took it all in and internalized it all and watched it all happen. And it was through that that I kind of learned in my life what I don't want. I learned it like I, I wanted to be really good with my money and I learned that I don't want to live that life anymore. When my sister was 16, she was pregnant with Aaron. So she was a teen mom. I was 14 years old. I'm two years younger than my sister. And this is what led up to my parents' divorce, which I think needed to happen probably before this. But when my mom found out my sister was pregnant, she thought it was a bit of a mistake how she raised all three of us with my dad. And so she told us she was divorcing my dad to take my sister and her new baby and me away from the situation so she wouldn't have to raise Aaron in the same situation that me and my brother's sister were raised in. At that point, my parents did get divorced. My sister ended up having Aaron when she was actually 17 and I had turned 15. And then we moved into a two bedroom apartment where Aaron and my sister could share a room and then me and my mom shared a room. Our then income went from being low to being like really low because my mom's a daycare teacher and they don't make a lot of money. She always, she's been a daycare teacher for like over 20 years. And so the money we had from my dad's job literally was gone and we just were living off her income. So my mom had picked up two extra jobs. She got another daycare teacher job after work and then really late at night she worked at a pet store almost every night. So. My mom was working her hardest, I was in school, and my sister was about to have her baby. The next question is, what is your relationship like with your sister now? I'll be honest, my relationship with my sister has always been very up and down. We haven't always gotten along or saw eye to eye, but I think a lot of siblings can relate to that. You know, me and my sister are two very different people, and I will say now that our relationship is wonderful. We talk often, we get along great now, and. And she has always, you know, she's my big sister. She's always been a really big part of my life and I've always looked up to her and I think she's always looked up to me in some ways too. So we have that back and forth, but our relationship is wonderful now. Has it always been? No. My next question is, what is my experience with addiction? Um, addiction has been such a big part of my life because that is the core reason that we adopted Aaron from my sister. And my dad passed away three years ago because of his addiction and it's really hard to talk about him because he's gone now. But as far as my sister, she's doing better now, but she has gone down a really hard path in her life. And since it's her we're talking about, I really think it's only fair that she gets to tell her part. Hello? Hey. Hey, what you doing? Uh, just got through wanding my hair with that little thing. Was, I think it's a coronary spin. I guess my first question I want to ask you is about being a teen mom. And I mean, I was there with you for it. We lived together. But for your experience in your own life, because I was two years younger than you and I was still in school. So what what was the hardest part about being a teen mom? Um, Just having to quit school, not being able to graduate with all my friends, um, time to grow up get a job, I had to work at night time because I had to keep Aaron during the day. I just had to grow up. I couldn't be like a normal 17 year old. Yeah, um, you worked at Cheeburger Cheeburger, didn't you? 
And when did you quit school? I dropped out, or I had to drop out because um, I was pregnant with Aaron. The day, the last day I was in school, I was pregnant with Aaron, and I had her like that night. Yep, I made all straight A's because I was pregnant and like doing right because I was in school. And then I had, of course, that's when I had to drop out. Let's talk about addiction. I mean, you've suffered from addiction. And so if you want to say your piece on that. Well, definitely want to say something about it because if it will help anybody, it's worth telling. Um, I just never thought that I would be somebody to be addicted to a drug. I've had, you know, boyfriends in the past who were addicted and I tried to help them, took them to rehab. Um, our dad, you know, was an alcoholic, so um, I never really realized what it meant to be an addict until I became one, and so addiction definitely doesn't discriminate. I was working, had two kids, married, you know, had a really good job, and it stripped everything from me, almost my freedom, so it's definitely something um, people need to be aware about. Do you think that growing up with dad had anything with you being addict, having an addiction issue? Like, do you think it was hereditary in any way? Or do you think, like, you know our childhood was a little crazy with mom and dad? Um, yeah. I think, like, I don't know. Like, they say it's hereditary, which dad was an alcoholic. And I don't know. I think it's just, like, a disease that we have. And I really didn't believe that until I went to rehab and I learned about it. And a lot of people argue about it, but it's just something that you don't know you have until you use that drug or, you know, you drink that drink and then you can't stop. And it yeah. literally, you know, took over my life. It, it was horrible. I think that maybe if he wasn't an alcoholic and would have been more, you know, like in our life, it could have probably helped me. Um, even if I did become an addict, you know, and he wasn't, he could have helped me recover better, you know what I'm saying, just having a father. Not that mom wasn't enough, it just, you know what I mean. Yeah. I kind of went downhill after he died, too, you know what I mean. When he died, I was already addicted, so it was like that's when it, it hit me harder because I kind of could realize what he was going through, and then he died, you know what I mean. So it was just yeah. like a slap in my face, which I didn't really realize I was addicted to something until, like, I got off the pain medication, which was a physical addiction. So I, in my head, I wasn't like, okay, I, I want this. It's just something like my body has to have it. But then when I switched to like the harder stuff, it was like, okay, no, I'm, a, I'm an addict. So where are you at now? Well, I will say that um, it took me um, kind of getting a slap in the face with um, possibly going to federal prison, and which made me turn my life around and honestly to God I wouldn't take it back because it's what saved my life. I truly am really grateful and have so much family that actually love and care about me and like I took that for granted, you know, like mom is so awesome and you and Aaron and just everybody that's been so forgiving of me, Zach, you know, just all the horrible things that I did while I was on drugs and it just, it's crazy how everybody just, you know, came back to me and like trusting me and it, just, it feels really good even if I do have to go to prison down the road you know God forbid I, I don't have to I hope I don't but if I do I knowing that I have my family and you guys behind me it, it it's a different mindset it really is it is and I remember texting you on one of your worser days telling you that you know you do feel alone and I understand that we're not there but we are all waiting on you mm -hmm. and I'm just thankful that you and Tyler were you know able to do what you've done for Erin and I know that she's happy and I'm happy that she's happy and I'm just so thankful that my family took you know over and came and stepped in where I couldn't because there's so many people out there that their children are in foster care and they're fighting I see them in class fighting to get them out and I feel like just beyond blessed that both my children didn't have to go that you know my family members stepped up and so that's a blessing I really think that everything in life happens you know, the way it's supposed to. I think so too. I think it's really selfless yeah. of you to feel that way. I'm just really, really thankful. Me too. We're all really happy about where you're at. I know, and it's better. The more people that hold me accountable, the less likely I will ever go back to that. So is there anything that you would say to someone who wants to get better, but they were in your shoes and they just feel like they never could get off of it? Yes, and that is that you just have to give it time, and I know that sounds horrible, but it eventually gets better. If it didn't, nobody would recover. 
it, you just have to give it, there's going to be good days and bad days, but the good days outweigh the bad days by, um, like, far. That's awesome. Thank you for spilling your guts on camera. Hey, you're welcome. I probably sound like a country geek, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, they've listened to me for a long time, so they're used to it. Right, love you, bye. Love you, bye. So I brought in the troops for my next question. Hello. Hi. Um, the question is, what was Aaron's life like in Alabama? And we're going to let Aaron take this one. Under pressure. Uh, <laughs> I had a really good and loving and supporting family. I had a younger half-sister. We didn't have the same dad, same mom. So I think like life started getting like crazy in like sixth grade because that's when I moved. I didn't go to the same elementary school. I changed schools. I didn't have friends in sixth grade. I also moved in with um, my, me and my mom. We moved in with her fiance at the time, who she got married to, which is my sister's dad. And it was good until like later on, they started fighting a lot. So that was a lot. And then maybe like two years later, they got a divorce. You we moved in with my grandma. And then maybe like a year living with my grandma, that's when my mom started having her addiction problems. Then she moved out of the picture. And then I just lived with my grandma. And then that's when my grades, like my grades were kind of getting bad from sixth grade, but then that's when my grades really went down. So that's when life was kind of getting really rough and hard. I feel like um, during that time I was like, starting to pay attention. I mean, I knew what was going on with my sister, so I started to pay attention to like what was going on with Erin, and she had all Fs in all of her classes at school, and she would sleep all the time, and she was skipping classes and wouldn't go to class, and when she wasn't in class, she was sleeping in all her classes, and that reflected on her grades, and then, you know, my mom, her grandma loved her so much, and that's who was taking care of her, but my mom is 61 and she's still a daycare teacher and she struggled a lot taking care of Erin and a lot of Erin's needs weren't met. She was very loved. Very. Grandma's mm -hmm. the best mm -hmm. ever, but it just, it wasn't working out for Erin's life. And Erin, in my opinion, seemed very depressed and her attitude change and her parents change and just everything about her was very different um, during the time of her mother's addiction. I agree. I guess that kind of segues us into the next question, right? It says, what does Tyler think about having Aaron? How long have you um, known Aaron? I've known Aaron since she was probably about three or four years old. Do you ever remember not knowing Ty? No. <laughs> I'm mean, being for real. Like, I cannot remember, like, not, like, you not being there. Yeah. yeah. So we've always, I've always been a part of Aaron's life, loved the kid to death. I was always kind of her play partner when she was younger. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I've always loved kids, so it was a no-brainer when it came to the point of where we saw these red flags with Aaron. It just made complete sense that me and Laura were in such a good place to be able to take Aaron in. Um, so I'm super happy, so glad. I mean, un very unfortunate circumstances for why we had to take Aaron in, but like she's honestly the light of our lives right now, and we're happy to have her. We love her to death. We do love her to death. And we do. It wasn't like ever a conversation like, hey, Ty. Should we take Aaron? Or like, Ty, what do you want to do? It was like just always a conversation. It was assumed from the beginning. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't we? Um, like, she's been very, we've been so close with her for so long. It's like, if we can help her, why if wouldn't we, we help, help her? Yes, it's my family and family always comes first. I will say, like, us just talking about it makes it sound so easy. Like, we oh decided we would take Erin and then <laughs> no, she was, was here. Like it took like so long. Many was, trips, many flights back to Alabama for of us. Lots court dates, court lots dates. of lawyers. Lots of talk. Unfortunately, yes. at the time, um, my sister was not in a good place at all and we weren't getting along at all and my mm -hmm. sister disagreed completely with us having Aaron and it was it made it more that was a struggle. It was yeah. very difficult. I, that was when she was in her deepest part of her addiction so I, it was not her talking. Yeah. yeah. And I, I completely get where she's coming from like we're trying to take away her who kid from her. Who wants to lose their child? Like yeah. who wants to be like yeah sure you know so I understand that. Okay next question is what is y'all's life like now raising a teenager? <gasps> 
Mm. Ooh. Real um, question. My life consisted of me, me, and me. And, and me. And him. <laughs> but me, me, me. I feel like my life yeah, was a little bit. Yes. And the, my cats were always high up on the totem pole. But of course. I feel like my life was a little bit selfish before, but I didn't have kids and I spent all my time on social media, all my time working, all my time hanging out with friends or traveling the world and just being busy and working. And I feel like my time is now spent with my family, taking care of Aaron. Ty is 50-50 in this with me. Um, we take He takes her to school every morning. I pick her up from school every afternoon. Um, he does homework with her. You do uh, homework with her too, though. I do homework with her, but girl, I'm not that good at I math. I do the math. He does the math portion. portion. That's the math. Portion. I help with art. Part that Aaron hates or... is my part. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a lot of rules for Aaron that we have we to did. keep up with and it's like a whole list <laughs> <laughs> but with that being said you know she's our responsibility and we take that very seriously we have <laughs> we have a good time together but Aaron like her grades went from all F's to being all A's and yeah. A's and B. She's even in honors English now. And it, it just goes to show <laughs> you, like, what do you think about this, Aaron? I think it goes to show you what your home, what a kid's home life is like. It does. That's 100% true. Like, if your environment <laughs> is not to, good. Yeah, or to a point where no one's holding you accountable, it turns into bad grades, acting out, skipping school, things like that. And, like, we're living proof that if you implement some rules, and pay challenge attention and ch exactly challenge then good things can be done what and what would you what's your perspective on that like where you came from not saying that you weren't being raised properly but like having the rules that you have now what what do you feel is the difference it's uh it was a lot for me in the beginning because it was just like whoa you're being like really strict but then like i figured out that like they're just rules like they're, it's normal to have rules set and I wasn't used to that or I, I've never been used to good grades. It's not like I've always had bad grades like all F's my entire life, but it's never been like A, B, honor roll. Now that I think back to all those F's I have and how like stressed out I was, it kind of makes me like, mm feel anxious or something. There's a lot that goes on in children's home life and just because they make bad grades doesn't really rate their intelligence level. I mean, a child mm -hmm. should be True. looked into what's going on behind the scenes and I think that reflects a lot on the grades. Mm -hmm. Will we ever have our own child? Oh the my next question. God. We already have a 14 year old baby right here. 15. 15, 15 is what I said. <laughs> Bank. <laughs> Bank. The plate is full. Next question is, what does Aaron like about LA? I love everything about LA. I like that there's more things to do. I feel like the, you're always gonna find judgmental people everywhere, but there's like less judgment. I think here. Aaron likes to express herself through her hair yes. and fashion, and she really struggled with that in Alabama because um, it's a smaller city. It's a smaller city. Everybody and, knows everybody for the most really part. And it's really hard to like be exuberant with your fashion and style and not feel a little looked at or judged. So I think in LA, she feels really comfortable expressing herself and no one cares. Um, okay, so what's life like with Lauren Tyler? It's very nice. I like it. I'm a better person. I make... Do you get in trouble ever? I get in trouble <laughs> all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not one day where I don't get in trouble, but I know... You haven't been in trouble today. <gasps> I will. I will. <laughs> Trust me, it's she gonna come. She either leaves the milk out, spills something in the carpet, doesn't clean the cat boxes, doesn't do her oh, homework. I mean, there's it's things. Small things. It's she's, small things. She's not talking about it's, big things. Yeah, she's talking she's about not small like things. getting in big trouble, but it's just like, you know, the teenager things. But when I was a kid, I didn't understand that. And now looking back, I'm like, oh. Where do you see yourself after high school? So a lot of people ask me, like after high school, are you going straight back to Alabama? Like, what is, what's your, what are you doing? There's boo boo. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a very tough question for me because I have no clue. That's okay. You're a tenth grader. You're a tenth yeah, grader. I'm a, I'm a tenth no. grade, guys. I have no clue. I would like to. 
I could change my mind in the future because yeah. then again, I'm only 15 and Definitely. stuff. Definitely. I would like to do something with like art, with either just like drawing or animation or something like that. Mm -hmm. I find that to be pretty cool. Do you want to stay in LA or do you want to oh, go back? Oh yeah, I, def I don't want to go back to Alabama. I, I, the only reason why I would ever go back to Alabama is for my family. But Same. besides that... To visit is what you mean, right? Yeah. So guys, that is it for this video. We really tried to answer all of your questions that you wanted to know and let you know why my... My sweet little burger girl is in my mm -hmm. life. We don't touch that, faces when makeup is on. And I'm just so proud of my sister, and I'm so glad she was able to speak up in this video and say her part. Um, and I thank her so much for doing that. And I hope it opens a conversation that if you're dealing it with any of these situations, addiction, teen pregnancy, low income, it becomes a conversation, not something you have to run from or be scared of or hide mm -hmm. from. And know that your future is not the situation you're in right now. Everything can change for you for the better. Agreed. Um, I think there's definitely people that have it worse off than what we have it. Yes. We're grateful for what we have in our lives right now and we're glad to be able to talk about things and happy that we have a platform like Laura's channel to yes. even discuss things like teen pregnancy and addiction and things like that. So Because they're really serious topics. Yeah. We are super blessed that we have Erin in our lives. We're yeah. so happy that she's here with us. We love this child to death. And we want to thank you guys for being here. You guys have been a part of my life for almost seven years now. So I want to thank you guys for being here. And I want to be open with you guys and let you in this big piece of my life that I haven't really talked about. So thank you for being here and watching. We love you guys. Love you guys. Peace. Bye. 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 Today, I'm gonna take you guys thrifting with me. Chat sound effects. Yeah. Woo! No, 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 I mean like on the computer. Yeah. I mean, I mean. Yeah. 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 Yeah.